glad that you're here joining us, and uh, we know that there are many of you that are also joining us through the live stream. Uh, we want to just give you a very warm welcome and uh, tell you how excited we are that you're here to learn more about how you can take better care of your bodies and uh, how you can optimize your health. Uh, this morning, we're going to be talking about natural remedies and how you can boost your immune system and uh, hopefully be able to uh, fight off things like COVID and many other things that might be you know, coming afterwards. So um, shortly, I'm going to be asking my wife to come up, and I'll introduce her. But before we do that, just a few um, housekeeping items. If you've never been here before, uh, we do have the restrooms that are just around the corner there. There is water. Uh, if you need any water, feel free to take any of that. There are also some uh, free health resources back there. And uh, just feel free to take whatever you're interested in. And uh, there, there is going to be a time for questions if any of you have any specific questions about any of the things that are going to be demonstrated here. So do jot those down, and we'll give you an opportunity to share those. And um, I think that's it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, have a prayer, then I'll introduce my wife. She'll come up here. So um, we're very glad that all of you guys are joining us. Uh, we, we are a uh, Christian organization, and we're going to be sharing principles of health from the Christian perspective. And so we hope that they will be a blessing to you. We hope they'll, they'll be able to uh, help you improve your own health. So we're going to go ahead and begin with prayer, and then my wife will come up shortly. So I want to invite you to pray with me. Father God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to learn more about these amazing bodies that you designed and how we can take better care of them, how we can have a more abundant life, how we can have energy and strength. And we pray that you would help us to be able to understand and be able to put these into practice not just for ourselves, but also for people around us who may be hurting and suffering. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so I'm going to invite my wife to come up. This is uh, Hannah Hernandez. And um, my wife has been doing uh, cooking demonstrations and health-based presentations for a long time. Her mom uh, helped start a vegan restaurant in Finland. It is called Vagana, and as far as I know, it's still running. This was over 20 years ago. <laughs> And so anyway, she, she kind of caught that bug, that gene, and so as a result, she's continued doing that, and uh, so she does uh, plant-based uh, nutritional uh, demonstrations. She's a lifestyle coach, so uh, we're very glad to be here for the opportunity to share with you, and so uh, my wife is going to be the one that's going to be sharing with you this morning. Thank you, love. Welcome. Thank you for being here this morning, and um, thank you to the church here for hosting this for us. So my goal is that you'll learn something new and something that you can take home and practically put into practice, and um, I hope that you enjoy this as much as I enjoy this information and just sharing it with people. Um, if I could go ahead and have my slides up. Thank you. All right, so some of you may have heard of these things before called the eight natural doctors or principles for healthy living. And they are, um, in no particular order, exercise, nutrition, fresh air, trust in divine power, sunlight, water, rest, and temperance. And we don't have time to talk about all of these today. I wish we could. Um, but these are the principles that we need in our lives to live a healthy, happy, fulfilled life. And um, so we're just going to look at a few of them today, and particularly some um, natural remedies, as my husband mentioned, that I'm going to demonstrate up here for you guys to see. So we're going to start with nutrition. All right, you may have heard it said before, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Any of you heard that little quote before? Nutrition um, plays a powerful role in achieving optimal health and um, healing from disease. And it's really underestimated how powerful the food we eat is. So what is the best diet? So when you weigh all the different diets, there's a lot of different diets out there. The whole food plant-based diet comes out on top over and over again in scientific studies. It, it comes out as the top diet. So what are some of the benefits? It reduces inflammation. It reduces your carbon footprint. So it's healthier for you and healthier for the planet. 
And I think that's really cool because you're doing something that's good for, for your health and also good for the environment as well. It lowers your risk of type 2 diabetes and improves kidney function, reduces the risk of heart disease. And uh, my grandma, she had um, congenitive heart failure and um, she had lived most of her life eating a standard American diet, but after she had a heart attack and a major bypass surgery, she switched her diet, changed her diet, and lived several more years very healthy. Um, it lowers your levels of bad cholesterol, reduces the risk of cognitive impairment and dementia. We're hearing a lot these days about mental health and things you can do to prevent dementia, and a whole food plant-based diet is one of those things you can do. Um, it improves your gut health. How many of you have heard of about gut health lately? It's pretty important. Um, reduces risk of certain cancers, improves athletic performance. A lot of top athletes choose this kind of diet because they found that it gets them the best scores. Uh, reduces arthritis pain and helps maintain a healthy BMI. So there's many benefits. Um, so I want to share some of the top foods, we might call them superfoods, that we should eat on a regular basis to incorporate into our diet um, really daily. And studies have shown these, these foods that you should eat them daily in order to stay healthy. All right, so first on the list is chia and flax seeds and really nuts and seeds in general. Um, but chia and flax are the up at the top. You could call them the king and queen. <laughs> so um, they have ALA and essential fatty acids. In other words, our body doesn't make the omega-3 on its own. We need to eat it in our diet in order to have particularly a healthy brain. And um, so it helps brain health fighting depression and anxiety, and you can just take three tablespoons a day of ground flax seed. And um, I just brought this to show you guys because the um, Nutribullet is, is really common. A lot of people have them. You can grind your flax seed in that. Or I have a coffee grinder, and I grind my flax seed in that. And take it every day, either on your cereal, or you can put it in juice, or in a smoothie. Really easy to take. It also improves mental disorders. So if someone actually has a mental, diagnosed mental condition, taking um, the chia seed, flax seed, ground will help improve that. It improves your eyesight. It's also very important when you're pregnant to get enough of the omega-3s. Um, for, for the mother, for your own mental health and your hormones during pregnancy, and also it, it's been shown to have numerous benefits for your child, um, higher intelligence, and um, better communication and social skills, fewer behavioral problems, decreased risk of developmental delay, decreased risk of ADHD and autism and cerebral palsy. So they're really pushing now for pregnant women to get enough omega-3. Very important. Um, and it can reduce ADHD symptoms in children. So if your child it does have ADHD or a behavioral problem, giving them flaxseed will help them, or the chia seeds. Um, it's good for heart health, help fights inflammation and autoimmune diseases, helps alleviate menstrual pain, and it is good for the skin and high in fiber, which of course is good for your gut. All right, the next one is um, berries. And the top berry, does anybody know what like the healthiest berry is? Wild blueberries. Yeah, they come out on top with a lot of benefits. But all, that, all berries are really good. They're high in antioxidants. And antioxidants are really great because they help keep free radicals under control in the body which damage our cells and can lead to cancer and other problems. Um, they, berries improve blood sugar. They're high in fiber. And they're, of course, nutrient dense. They fight inflammation. You'll see a trend here, a lot of things that fight inflammation. Why is that important? Because inflammation causes disease. And um, so we want to eat foods that help fight inflammation. Again, they help lower bad cholesterol and protect 
against cancer. And the last one here on this screen is leafy greens, which are high in folate, which is good for mental function. Uh, recently, I was listening to a um, researcher in mental health, and he was talking about how some people have depression solely from a deficiency in folate. And once they take the folate supplement that they need, their depression goes away completely. So that's pretty cool. Um, again, the importance of nutrition in, in our health, physically, mentally. Um, all right, so greens are also good for bone health. Of course, Popeye the spinach man. Um, gut health, again, they fight inflammation. Good for regulating blood sugar. Good for immunity. Nutrient dense. And they help prevent cancer, heart disease, and type 2 diabetes. Few more superfoods here for you guys. Um, the little family of vegetables that includes your broccoli and your cabbage, your Brussels sprouts, your cauliflower. How many of you like to eat those vegetables? Oh, good, good, good. I love cabbage. Love to eat cabbage, and my kids love broccoli, so we're blessed. Um, they are anti-inflammatory. They're high in antioxidants, high in fiber. They're high in protein, which might be surprising to some of you, but these vegetables are high in protein. Um, high in vitamins and minerals. They fight against cancer and heart disease. Improves immunity. Lowers bad cholesterol, good source of vitamin C. Folate, calcium, iron, and selenium. And um, this is all based on scientific studies, but I'm not mentioning them all since that would take a long time. Um, and the last, well, not the last one, um, sea vegetables. How many of you eat sea vegetables? Oh, good. I'm glad to see some hands raised for that. Sea vegetables are very high in vitamins and minerals, such as like iodine, which is very important. We need to get iodine in our diet, and um, you, you're not getting enough from the iodized salt. Um, not, not a good source for iodine. Um, um, your sea vegetables, like seaweed, kelp, there's all different kinds, and you can take supplements because it's kind of hard to eat enough sea vegetables just eating seaweed. Some people don't, you know, even particularly like seaweed. In the picture, I just put a picture of sushi since that's people are most common with it there. Yes? Yeah, yes, spirulina, um, corella. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of different supplements. You can add them to smoothies or, you know, take them in a pill or something like that. Um, and they're high in protein, too, which is cool. Um, high in antioxidants. And then Corella, that one is, it's really good um, sea vegetable. And it's good for binding with toxins in your body and, um, and like heavy metals and um, other toxins that may be in your body, and then it binds with them and helps flush them out of your system, naturally detoxifying your body. So it's, it's really good to eat the sea vegetables as well. And also, sea, sea vegetables have omega-3 in them, which we already talked about that and some of its benefits, and they're good for the gut and the microbiome. Okay, now the last one. Beans. How many of you like to eat beans? My husband's Mexican. We eat a lot of beans. And, um, you know, um, I was reading one um, nutritionist, scientist who does research, and, you know, they say you should eat beans a lot. And in his research, he said you should eat beans at every meal. Uh, every meal. So I thought that was like, wow. Um, because they're so healthy and they're, they're just... They, so many benefits. So they're good for gut health. Um, they have fiber in them and prebiotics, which are good for your gut, helps your gut make the healthy bacteria that fights off disease and keeps you healthy. Of course, they're an excellent source of protein. Um, and um, on a plant-based diet, 
you're getting protein from all different sources, right? From your whole grains, from your beans, your legumes, from your nuts, um, from vegetables. And um, you don't have to worry about um, combining protein. In the old days, when they would talk about eating a, a vegan diet, they would say, you know, you got to combine your proteins to make sure you get the right amino acids, you know, like your rice and your beans together, which that is a complete protein. But you don't really have to worry about that if you're eating a balanced whole food plant-based diet. Uh, however, soy and quinoa are complete sources of, they have all the amino acids in them that you need. Um, how many of you are familiar with quinoa? That's a um, pseudo grain, um, which is really good. Okay, so beans are also nutrient dense with iron and folate in them. So a good source of iron. They're high in antioxidants. Very healthy for the heart, for preventing cancer, and for controlling diabetes and your blood sugar. So if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic, eat a lot of beans. Okay, so now that we've talked about superfoods, we're going to talk about some foods that, that we should avoid that are hurting our health. Okay, number one on the list is food with cholesterol. What kind of food has cholesterol in it? Okay, e eggs, yes, they have some cholesterol. Eggs are, um, the cholesterol in eggs is a little um, less objectionable than for say in, in meat and dairy. So anything that comes from an animal has cholesterol in it. Um, and our bodies make cholesterol too, right? We make good cholesterol and bad cholesterol and we want our good cholesterol high and our bad cholesterol low. So if we're eating cholesterol from animal products, what's going to happen to our cholesterol? It's going to go up. Not good. Okay, so um, we want to limit those foods, avoid those foods, and start with the, um, you know, your red meats and your milk, you know, start with those first, eliminating those from your diet. Okay, now, um, oxidized cholesterol, and particularly oxidized cholesterol that's mixed with sugar. Very bad combination, killer combination. When they fed that to rats, very bad. Their arteries clogged up very fast. Um, so what would be some sources of oxidized cholesterol with sugar that we eat on a regular basis in the standard American diet? Ice cream. Ice cream cake mixes, pudding mixes, even your pancake mixes that have the um, um, dry milk in it, right? Very, very bad. Very, very bad. Okay, next would be foods high in sugar. Of course, being uh, plant-based, well, there's you know a lot of studies out there on you know the harmful effects of you know red meat and such, but eating a diet a diet high in sugar just as harmful, very bad. Um, there's a lot of research on how harmful sugar is. So try and lower your sugar consumption, eat more fresh fruits for dessert, use natural sweeteners. Um, in the back here, you'll be able to try in a little bit, a lemonade, and there is no sugar in it. It's sweetened with stevia and a natural monk fruit. Uh, and that will not spike your blood sugar if you have um, blood sugar problems. Okay, um, then we have foods that are highly processed, so, you know, potato chips and <laughs> your highly processed food, all those freezer section things and in packages. Uh, refined carbs, now remember that our complex carbs, our whole grains are very healthy, your brown rice and um, these things, but when the refined carbs, not good. Um, and then foods that have been highly sprayed with pesticides, herbicides, and your modified foods, or also known as GMOs. You familiar with that term? Yes, okay, good, good. So look for the labels that say non-GMO and organic, even better. Because um, those, those pesticides, when we're putting those in our body, they're toxins. So now your body, you're taking on a toxic load and your body has to get rid of that, okay? So, um, and I'll just share really short. Um, I used to, you know, 
eat a healthy diet, you know, whatever. Um, but I never worried about making sure it was organic. Um, and I had some um, pain issues and went to the doctor and said, oh, yeah, you have fibromyalgia. Oh, thank you. That's very helpful. <laughs> now, what do I do, right? Well, oh, I'm sorry. We don't really do anything for that, um, you know, unless you want to take some drugs. So, I, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Um, so, anyways, I was doing some researching, and I decided to go organic. And so we just switched. One day, I went through my pantry, and uh, my husband and I, we, we live way out in the country. So I always keep a very stocked, full pantry. So I went very radical, and I got rid of all the non-organic food, gave it away to people, and then I rebought all organic. Within just weeks, I noticed a difference in my pain. Just within weeks, 80% less pain. Crazy. So my pain was from all those toxins in my body. And as soon as, you know, I got that out, eating food that didn't have that, felt so much better. So really, it is worth the investment. And my grocery bill, honestly, I haven't noticed that it's um, that much higher. It, it, it hasn't broke the bank. It's worth the investment, especially when you feel so much better. Okay, and again, the last one of harmful foods you want to avoid is animal Protein. So not protein. You need protein in your diet from our, like we talked about, beans, nuts, seeds, whole grains. Um, but not from animal protein because it carries the risk of cancer, heart disease, and many other problems. Okay. Now, we're specifically talking about using foods um, medicinally to help us fight disease. So foods high in vitamin C. Vitamin C is um, very important for the body. It helps pr protect the body from free radicals and toxins. It helps absorb and store iron, and it helps strengthen the immune system. And there's been some cool studies done out there on what high dosage of um, intravenous vitamin C, things it can cure. Um, it's not quite so commonly known, but vitamin C, to me, it's like the miracle, <laughs> uh, miracle cure, <laughs> I call it. If I feel like I'm coming down sick, I take my vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams every hour until I feel better. And it works. It really works. I feel like I hardly ever come down sick when I do that. Um, and you can make your own homemade vitamin C powder. Um, you can take lemons and just squeeze out. And I would use organic lemons, but that's just me. Um, Squeeze out a little of the juice, but leave some in, and then slice them up, dehydrate them like in a dehydrator, and then put them like in your blender, blend it up into powder. And you have your own vitamin C powder homemade that you can use. And um, a, a friend of mine, we did it together, and we blended it before we dehydrated it, so it was in a um, paste like a liquidy paste, and we put that on in the dehydrator. The dehydrator has sheets on it where you can put liquidy stuff on. And so when it came out, it was like a, like a chip, kind of, a vitamin C chip. And we did it like that so we could give it to our kids, and they just eat it, you know, because it's, it's kind of like candy to them. It's a little, like, almost like a sour candy. And then they're getting some vitamin C. And the vitamin C like that, it's also a good binder for toxins. So again, like if you're trying to detoxify, which all of us were exposed to a lot of toxins, you can take and it will help bind to those toxins and eliminate them from your system. Um, okay, so the foods that are the highest in vitamin C are your citrus, bell peppers, which even have more vitamin C than citrus, Red cabbage, kiwi, broccoli, cantaloupe, strawberries, tomatoes, mango, guava, and papaya. And papaya is also antiparasitic. So um, that's, that's a cool tip. Um, okay. So now on these, I'm going to be showing you some things as I talk here for whoever's moving the cameras around. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is onions. Here we go. Onions are high in vitamin C, vitamin B, potassium, 
Um, they can help decrease your bad cholesterol levels. They fight inflammation, so they're anti-inflammatory. They're high in quercetin. How many of you have heard of quercetin? Very good. We were teaching a class on uh, foods and supplements to take um, if you get, come down with COVID, the COVID virus. Quercetin is one of them. Um, high in antioxidants, particularly the red onions. Um, they contain cancer-fighting compounds, and um, they help control blood sugar. They're antibacterial, antifungal, and antiparasitic, and they, they contain prebiotics in them, which are good for your gut. And um, okay, so now let me show you what we're gonna do here. I'm just gonna kind of cut this up. So we're, I'm gonna show you how to make an onion poultice. So because it's anti-inflammatory, if you have a cough or you have a flu virus or a cold virus, you can make a little poultice and put this right on your chest. So just chop it up roughly. I don't know, I don't, I don't usually cut things like this. Um, and you can really feel a difference. I know we, um, we were helping a lot of people who had COVID and over the phone and <laughs> taking people um, some poultices and things to do. And uh, people really said, oh, when I put the onion poultice on, I just, I just felt the tightness in my chest, you know, the chest congestion and everything just clear up from this. So it's, it's really good. Um, so I got these towels from Walmart. They're just thin little towels. What I wanted to find, but I didn't find here, was reusable cloth bags. And out west, we have a store called Sprouts, and in their bulk section, they have cloth bags. But I went to Whole Foods, and I, all they had was mesh bags, which wouldn't work. Um, so I, maybe you know where you could find one of those cloth bags to keep around, and then you can throw it in the washer when you're done and wash it and reuse it. Um, but you don't want it to be mesh because then, as I'm going to show you some of the things I'm going to do, it could fall out of the bag. And you don't want to put the raw onion directly on your skin because it is it's the uh, volatile oils in it could burn your skin if you're sensitive. So put it right in the um, in this little rag here. And fold it up. This is why the this is why the cloth bag is nice, so it doesn't you know fall out. And you get onions all over your bed. Okay, so here it is, and just put it right on your chest. And yes, you'll smell like onion, but that's better than feeling sick. You can take a shower later. Um, okay, so that's simple, right? All you need is an onion. Everybody keeps onions in their pantry all the time, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's easy. You have it on hand. It's very simple. Yes. Um, yeah, so if you're sick, um, like say you, you have the flu, um, do it every time you go to rest. Put one on at bedtime. Put one on, you know, when you take a nap to rest. And, um, you know, then after you've used it, you know, obviously you're not going to get up and change it in the night. Um, but then, so then throw it out and use a new one. Because remember, onions absorb toxins. So whenever I use an onion in cooking, I use the whole thing. I don't, put, I don't leave it in the fridge because it's going to absorb toxins. And I don't want to eat that. Um, the same thing, if I put it in, in food, I always put it in last minute. Um, okay, so use that for cold, congestion, flu, coronavirus, any other crazy virus that comes around, use that. Um, okay, the other thing is for, I'll just cut here and show you. For an ear infection, you can use. So you can steam the onion and then put it right on your ear. And again, I would use a little cloth in between. And it works great. I know this works because I used to get really bad ear infections as a kid. Very, very bad. And uh, my mom would put the, put the onion poultice on and would make my ear feel so much better. Okay. And, of course, add them to your diet as frequently as, as possible when the um, 
Spanish flu, whenever that was back in history. <laughs> there was a family that was not getting sick. And everyone in their town is sick. Lots of people are dying. And they went to him and said, what are you doing? Why are you not sick? And they said, well, we eat onions every day, every meal. Cooked, raw, we, we eat onions. So eat lots of onions. Okay, that's it for the onion. Do they need to flip this back? Thank you. All right. Excuse me. The next thing here is ginger. So ginger is um, high in antioxidants, anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal. I don't know why I didn't write it down, but I believe it's antiparasitic as well. Um, so we're going to need another little rag here. And this time we're going to grade, grade the ginger up. That way, again, you want you want the nice juices and stuff in it to to um to come out. Oh. And when you're you doing this, um, use organic, you know, because it's so much better. You know, you're you're putting it there on your body to take out the toxins, you know, for the anti-inflammatory property, you know. So find the organic one. So much better. Okay, do we have enough here to, to use? I think so. Sorry. Okay, so we have our little bit of grated ginger. It's all nice and juicy. And again, in the rag. Okay, so this type of poultice you can use for gout, arthritis, and joint inflammation. Um, you can also... So it's just that the, the same way, very easy. So if you you know having joint pain or something, put it on. Um, if you're using this for a small child, the ginger like this is very strong. So all you need to do is to cut, cut off here, a slice like this to use, you know, for a small child, and put you know um, your cloth or your paper towel in between. Okay, um, of course, ginger is also good in make it into tea for nausea or for indigestion, and it's also good for menstrual pain, and um, you can use it in tea, or if you want it in an even stronger dose in the, in the pills, you know, you can get ginger pills. Okay, next we're going to do the, um, uh-oh, <laughs> thank you, the potato. The potato. Now, potatoes are also um, reduce inflammation. They have magnesium, phosphorus, uh, potassium, B vitamins, folate. So the potato you're going to use for tissue inflammation, such as a sprained ankle or splinters, an ingrown toenail, or um, let's see. Um, the potato is more... It's not as strong like the ginger or the onion, you know, where that can burn you if you put it right on your skin. So the potato you can use even like for a sty in your eye. Um, so it's, it's more gentle or f on a child. If a child has, you know, something, use the potato. And again, for the poultice, let's see, get another rag here. I just, oh my. Just grade the potato up. Now, if you're using it over your eye, you could also just use a slice of the potato, too. But when you grate it, you know, you're helping bring out the juices and the stuff that's in it that, that is healing, has the healing properties. The other thing I like to, to use the potato for is to make a broth that's very healing and helps replenish, you know, your electrolytes with the potassium and um, such in it. And you just cut your potato up like you're making potato soup. You can add some onions, some carrots, let it simmer on low for a few hours, and then drink the broth off it. Um, let's put our grated potato, it looks like hash browns, right in here. Can you guys see this? we see here 
Okay, it's the same idea as the last one. So it's simple to do, you can see. Most of us have, you know, a potato, a onion in our, in, our, um, you know, in our pantry, right? So it's very simple. Okay, here. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Here we go. So just fold it up again. And now you have your potato, your potato poultice that you can use maybe on your eye for something. If you have a sty in your eye um, or wherever you need maybe on a sprained wrist or something. Okay. All right. The next is the cabbage. And, um, oops, move some of this out of the way. The cabbage is one of my favorites. Let's see here. <laughs> okay. So the cabbage is anti-inflammatory, and it's high in vitamin C and vitamin K. It's good for digestion and stomach ulcers. So if you have a stomach ulcer, or you're having digestion problem, you can put a leaf of cabbage in boiling water, let it simmer, and then drink the water. So I have the cabbage here, and this is this cabbage has been a lifesaver for me. Okay, and I have a rolling pen, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna roll the cabbage to get the um, the um, oils again, the the good stuff in it, the juices in it to come out. So it's very simple to do, right? Very easy. Um, let's see here. Okay, so the cabbage we could use for, works very well for mastitis. So if you're breastfeeding, always keep cabbage in your fridge. And it works very well. Very well, I could I can tell you from experience. It also works for, um, let me see here on my notes, for um, cyst, if you have like a um, breast cyst, or, um, and, it, and it works for anything, because it reduces inflammation. So any time a type of inflammatory thing, you can use the cabbage for. Uh, when I was a teenager, I had a, um, a cyst on, on, my, on my breast, and so it was very hot, and growing very large, and it, I mean, it was very scary being just a teenager. And, um, you know, we were trying to get into the doctor to get it imaging and all this, and someone told my mom, put the cabbage on it. So in the time that it took to, to get into the, into the doctor, I used the cabbage every day for a couple weeks, um, maybe, I think, maybe about two weeks. And um, by the time we went in for the imaging, it was gone, and they were like, wow, what did you do? They're like, oh, wow, yeah, that must have been like, you know, some kind of cyst or something, but it's not there now. So it's amazing. Yes. No, no, just raw, raw like this. And it's very nice for mastitis. I don't know if any of you ladies have ever had mastitis, but it, you know, it comes right out of the fridge and it's cool. It works so well. It's amazing. Amazing. Um, Okay, in, and you can use it for um, inflammation and congestion as well, the, the cabbage like this. You know, put the cabbage leaves right on your chest even or over your um, neck. Okay, so if I can get back to my slides. So always, always keep that cabbage around. Okay, cayenne. Cayenne is a blood stimulant, not a nervous stimulant. Um, so it helps thin the blood. It can also stop bleeding. So if you have a big cut or a wound, you can put cayenne on it. Now, it, it's going to burn, but it will stop the bleeding. So <laughs> if you're a long ways from the hospital, that's a good thing. Okay, um, it lowers blood pressure. You can take the cayenne in capsules. And it also... Um, you can put it directly under the tongue if you, you know, if you see somebody's having symptoms like they're on the ground, a heart attack or a stroke, you can put a spoonful of cayenne right under their tongue and it'll help stimulate the heart. Yeah, it's very powerful. Now still call 911, but in the meantime, you can do that. And um, my friend who works at a lifestyle center, they did this once for a patient. 
And then when the ambulance showed up, they're like, why did you call us? She's, she's fine now. Of course, they took her and checked everything out, but it kicked her heart right back on. <laughs> so um, it was quite, it's quite amazing. It's, it's very powerful. And of course, I, I love this quote from an um, author of mine who talks on health. Perfect health requires perfect circulation. So that's very important, you know, that our blood is, is thin and, and circulating well. Um, okay. The next one is oregano, and I have here oregano oil. Um, how many of you seen the little things of oregano oil? And they sell it where it's safe to consume. Um, there's the oregano essential oil. Not all of it is um, food grade. So just make sure if you're buying it to take internally that it is food grade. Um, and oregano, it's, it's a very powerful antioxidant. It's antibacterial, antifungal, antiviral, and um, again, it's antiparasitic. I, I don't think I wrote that down, but it is. Um, in test tube studies, it was showed to kill cancer cells. I think that's really cool. I mean, just your oregano, you know, your kitchen herb. Um, it, um, let's see here, is anti-inflammatory, supports the immune system. You can use it as a natural antibiotic, and it's good for the gut. So in another study done on pigs, oregano essential oil protected the gut wall from damage, and it prevented it to become leaky. You've heard of leaky gut? Yep. Um, it reduces the number of E. coli bacteria in the gut. So um, again, if I feel like, oh, I might be coming down with something, Take a few drops of oregano oil, and even the um, because it's very strong, I always put it in a carrier oil. So a spoonful of like olive oil, and put a couple drops of the oregano oil in. And I even get my my daughter to take it. With you know maybe maybe you have to bribe for something afterwards, but she does it. So <laughs> very powerful. Um, let's see here. The next one is echinacea. Echinacea is antiviral, antimicrobial, and it has many uses. So you can use it as tea. You can have it in a tincture, which I find very handy to just keep it in a tincture. The herbs I use most frequently, like lavender, echinacea, some others, I keep them in a tincture. Very quick and easy to use on the run. You can also um, make it into tea and then soak your rags in it and put it um, on as a poultice, okay? <clears throat> you can use it as a mouthwash. So again, make a strong tea, use it as a mouthwash. So you use echinacea for coughs and colds, flus, COVID, <laughs> uh, whatever virus comes next, bronchitis, upper respiratory infections, gingivitis. So that's where you'd use it as a mouthwash. Um, influenza, canker sores, yeast infections, ear infections, vaginitis, so you could actually do a sitz bath with um, echinacea tea. Um, and then inflammatory conditions, and it also helps with wound healing. Um, they have um, powdered echinacea I've seen before that you can use on wounds. That might be harder to find. Okay, the next thing here is charcoal. And I'll let you see here on the slide all the things it's good for before I show you how to make a poultice. Gas bloating and acid reflux. Um, and it's funny, I had a, uh, a doctor, OB, I really liked. She was from one of the islands. And uh, I can't remember right now which one, but um, for acid reflux, she always said, in my country, we just use charcoal. We're simple there. We don't we don't get all the over the counter um, anti acids. We just use charcoal, <laughs> so it works for you know coming from a doctor. You don't usually hear that from a doctor, um, anyways. And it does work because I've used it for that. It works for nausea and vomiting. Works for diarrhea. It's it is um, antibacterial. Charcoal is. Um, they use it in hospitals for drug overdose and poisoning. You can use it for bee stings, spider bites, ants, ant bites, bug bites, and snake venom. Yep, yep.
stop, you know, keep doing that. Now he's fine, never have a, a bleeding nose. Wow, that's pretty cool. So he used the charcoal, like a, I'm a, pult, a yeah. poultice, I'm assuming, like I'm gonna show you over the nose for a bleeding nose. That's cool, it has many uses, many, many uses. Yeah, yeah, so you can get it in powdered form, you can get it in tablets, and they have it in capsules, but I don't really like it in capsules. I like it in a um, powdered form in water and drank it, or in, um, in the tablets, because if you're taking it for acid reflux, you want it in a tablet, right, you know, right in your throat. Um, and you can, of course, make charcoal water. Some people feel like charcoal will constipate them if they use too much of it. And so you want to make sure if you're taking charcoal to be drinking a lot of water with it. And that's why, again, I don't really like the capsules because it's easy to take one and not take enough water with it. And if you mix it in water, you know, you drink the full glass of water. So anyways, it's just preference. Um, you can use it for eye and ear infections, for tooth and gum disease. You know, drink the charcoal water, swish it around in your mouth, just swallow it, it's good for you. Um, and then for jaundice and newborns, and in that one you'd want to make charcoal water and give the baby some water. And um, we, we did use that with my son when he had colic. We gave him little spoonfuls of charcoal water just to see. You're very desperate when you have a baby with colic, so you try whatever. Anyways, um, and then also it's a binder with poisons, toxins, and so if you're detoxing, you could drink, you know, a big glass of water with a spoonful of charcoal in it um, to help detox the body. Again, make sure whenever you're trying to detox your body, you need to drink a lot of water to flush everything out and keep your, your gut moving well. Okay, so let me show you how to make a little poultice here. Someone who's local, where is the best place to buy charcoal? Is there a health food store that has it? Okay, thank you. Yeah, just in case you know no one's ever heard of charcoal before, I always like to say where you can buy it. Okay, so you're ordering it. You're ordering it online. Yeah, you can order it off Amazon. Everybody buys things online now. Okay. So I'm just putting a little little bit in here. I, I don't want to waste this. Now, charcoal makes a mess and it stains, so just um, beware of that. And with Yes, this is activated charcoal. Yeah. And you, you, you know, in other countries, they make it themselves. You can do here, too. But it's just so convenient, you know, to just buy it. Um, but I had a friend who did uh, missionary work as a missionary doctor overseas. And uh, she would teach them how to make their own charcoal so that they had it. Now, what I'm going to mix with this to make a poultice is flaxseed. Everyone's familiar with flaxseed. We talked about it earlier. So I have some ground flaxseed here. And I'm just going to mix equal parts. Because the flaxseed kind of gels up, you know. M maybe some of you are familiar with using it as like an egg substitute because of how it gets all gelinous. Um, so yeah, it, you can also use, if you don't have flaxseed, you can use psyllium husk. But most people are more familiar with flaxseed than psyllium husk. Psyllium husk is, um, um, yeah, it's another uh, form of fiber that's used for um, constipation usually. But you can find it at the, at the health food store at um, I don't know if you have Natural Grocers Vitamin Cottage here in Chicago, but that's where I find it. Okay, so mix it together. Mm, I think it needs a little more flaxseed. I know some places online, they sell pre-made charcoal poultices. Some people like to just keep those in their fridge, you know, it's convenient instead of 
mixing up your own. And there's a company called Black Ice. You can just Google it, find it. And um, they sell some charcoal poultices that you can, you know, just easy. And those are actually, you don't have to keep them in the fridge. So they're shelf stable. So I'm adding a little water now, a little bit at a time. My father is a uh, pastor in Arizona, and one time one of his um, parishioners came to visit him, and he'd been bitten by a rattlesnake, and his leg was swollen up, like, very, very large. And, um, you know, my dad said, well, what have you done for it? Well, nothing, and I'm not going to go to the doctor. Okay. So he said, well, I'm going to make you a charcoal poultice for your leg, you know, because he's like, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die. <laughs> okay. So he says, okay, I'm going to put charcoal on it. So he put charcoal all over his leg. It was totally fine. So it really does work. Now, I, I, I just want to say, if you get bit by a poisonous snake, I would advise going to the hospital. Put the charcoal poultice on and then get in your car and go to the hospital. But this gentleman, I guess, was very radical for some reason, and he didn't want to go to the hospital. So, Okay, so now it's in a nice paste, and it will get even thicker. And as I mentioned earlier, it will stain. So you want to use some paper towels. I mean, if, I guess you could use dirty rags if you don't mind that they're going to be stained. I do mind. So I'm going to put it on, on a paper towel here. I have two layers of paper towel. It'll still go through. Just spread it on. It's very easy to do. Anybody can do this. Yeah, see, it's already coming through the layers. Stick it on, stick it on your bee sting, whatever. You can use some, like, plastic wrap around. I didn't want to waste any today, but you know how to do that. It's very easy. And there's your charcoal poultice. Very easy to use. Um, I even know some people have used it for stomach problems and put the, you know, it on their stomach, um, the poultice. So you could take it internally and use the poultice both ways. Okay, now we're going to talk about castor oil. This is another one I really like. Castor oil also stains. So when you're making the poultice, I have a rag and a bag in my bathroom that I, that I use for castor oil poultices because it stains. Um, and then my castor oil, I keep it in the fridge in case I want to use it internally because you can use it internally too. So um, castor oil, you can use for bone spurs. And again, you would just take some of the oil and put it on your, your rag. And then maybe if you have like them in your neck, you know, put it on your neck or wherever. Um, then you can use it for unnatural formations such as ovarian cyst, cataracts in your eye, uh, breast lumps, liver, gallbladder, and kidney stones. And again, that's, you know, put it on your, on your rag and put it on the area. And I've done this for ovarian cysts. It really helps. Um, and it was shown in, um, I forget what magazine, <laughs> Medical Journal, published a study on, on castor oil being uh, very effective for um, ovarian cyst. Um, and it's also good for taking orally for constipation. A lot of people have heard of that. But use it with caution. And um, you, can, you can add just a little bit, like a tablespoon, in a nice big smoothie, and make sure you're near a bathroom. And do not use that on a regular basis. That's, you know, if you really need to use it. Because, of course, it's not good to always use, you know, um, strong herbs and stuff to um, be inducing yourself to use a restroom. You need to um, be eating more fiber, drinking more water, exercising to be going regularly on a regular basis. But you can use it in an emergency. And you've probably heard of women inducing labor this way, too. Um, and, and that's how it's... It's because it induces. Uh, like overnight, you can do overnight, or if you're laying down for a nap, do it during that time. And um, like, I, like I mentioned, I just leave it in my, um, 
put the cloth back in my bag, and then next time I just add a little more oil on it, and you know, it's all oily, so I then use like a rag over top of my castor oil rag. Yeah, people use it for that too. Yeah, you can, you can use it for that. And it also is very good with scar tissue. So if you have scar tissue, you can um, massage castor oil into the area to help with your, with your scar tissue. Okay, next we're going to do the um, Russian penicillin. And the recipe is on the screen, so you can take a picture of it. Now, garlic contains a compound in it that has an antibiotic properties in it. And Louis Pasteur and Albert Schweitzer, they both studied garlic as a natural antibiotic. Um, during World War II, garlic was known as Russian penicillin. It received the name because it was used to treat soldiers' wounds when they ran out of regular antibiotics. Cooking does not destroy garlic's benefits, but cooking is actually recommended particularly if you have a um, sensitive stomach, to reduce the harsh odor and, and you know sometimes it can be a little harsh. Um, and it's tough on the skin, so I don't recommend putting garlic directly on the skin because it can burn you. Um, okay, so this is a recipe that you see there on the screen. It's all in my blender. And I'm gonna blend it up for you guys and you guys get to taste it. And if I could have my husband come up front to taste it for me with you guys. I, I actually am very sensitive to garlic and so I would try it. But when I make it for myself, I add extra ginger and I don't put the garlic in because it gives me an allergic reaction. It's, yes, in this one, it's raw because it is more powerful raw. But you know, if you're gonna do this for children, you know, you can, you could cook the garlic. However, my, my friend makes this and gives it to all her children. And she puts it in raw and all her children take it. Especially, you know, if you put a lot of orange in it, it's, it tastes very good. This is gonna be noisy for a minute. Thank you. You want to make sure it's blended very, very well because the chunks are not nice. Yes. Peppermint oil. Yeah, very good as well. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to let you taste this with them. This one has cayenne? Uh, yeah, you can add cayenne to it too, but there's no cayenne in this one. It's just... Try and do it gentle. And if I could have um, a couple of my volunteers here come up and hand these out. Good. <laughs> it's good. Not spicy enough. Yeah, I mean, you can add more garlic, you know, for your own self. I didn't want to scare anybody off. I just put in, I just put in five cloves, like it said. When we had COVID, I was adding gar uh, uh, cayenne to everything because it really stimulates circulation. Um, you have to be careful, though. You already have a bloodstream disorder. You, ha you have to be careful. There's some very strong, you know, herbs and such. Thank you, love. Um, such as garlic, cayenne, ginger, turmeric. You know, they all thin the blood. And if you're on blood thinning medications, you do need to be very careful because you can thin your blood too much. And, you know, um, I have doctor friends who um, we've tried very hard to um, come up with the amount of... Um, say like turmeric would replace a baby aspirin and we haven't come up with the exact amount yet but if someone ever finds out let me know because I want to know too so I can tell people when I when I teach both both let me thank you for reminding me here at my notes okay so you can use this 
if you feel like you're getting sick, you can use it if you know you were exposed to someone who was sick. Use it if you are sick. Um, use it if you're fighting an infection. You know, if you're fighting some type of, you know, infection in your body, bacterial or viral um, illness. Use it to strengthen the immune system. Do we have about enough? Has a couple more people here? This? Well, you know, it's, we're just adding fresh garlic and ginger. This probably isn't going to interfere with your medications unless you're, like, drinking, the, you know, a whole one of these every day, which I don't, I don't think anybody's going to do that. Whoops, some of these I put a lot in. I, I took the skin off, but I left some of the white stuff on because that's healthy, too, for you. Oh, I'm sorry. She asked if I left the peels on the um, orange and lemon, and I was saying I, I took off the peel but left quite a bit of the white stuff. And over here, there's a question. Oh. It's okay. I understand. When we're moms, we forget a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. If you cook it, it's still going to have a good effect. And like I mentioned, because I have an allergic reaction to garlic, I don't put the garlic in, so I put in lots of ginger and have it as a smoothie like that. That's very good. Anyone else need some? There's a couple more up here. And there's more in my blender if anyone, if I missed anyone. Okay, if I go back to the slides here. Anyone else? Raise your hand if you need one. Great. Good. Excuse me. Okay, so the other thing is um, using teas and broths for added um, nutrition. And they're also a very gentle way to um, work with your body for healing or for children, small children, um, to make, make tea. So, you know, especially with herbs, um, with tinctures, you have to be more careful because some herbs can be very powerful. And, and it's, you know, it's very important with herbs to always look up, make sure that they don't interact with any of the medications you take. Make sure if you're pregnant or, nur or nursing that you're very careful. Um, so just, you know, do your own research whenever you use anything. Um, but using them as a, in a tea or a broth is a very easy, natural, gentle way with the body. Um, so for instance, for a cough, you can make tea with thyme and honey. And in a study that was done, it was shown to be just as effective as cough syrup. And that's thyme, your kitchen thyme, and honey. Actually, the study was thyme alone, no honey, but honey's good for coughs too. Um, and then, of course, you can replace caffeinated drinks uh, with, with teas, herbal teas that are going to be health, healthy and nourishing for the body because um, those caffeinated drinks are going to um, not be good for you. So dandelion root tea, for instance, is um, a tea detoxer. It's good for the liver. Raspberry leaf tea is uh, you know, good for your hormones. Whatever hormonal problem you have, this is the beauty of herbs. It helps your body where, where your body's at to balance whichever way you need to go. So the raspberry tea is, is very good. Um, good for all kinds of things. And of course, chamomile tea. Chamomile is actually antiviral, which is pretty cool. And of course, it helps you sleep. That's what most of us know chamomile for. OK, um, smoothies. And smoothies are another great way to pack in lots of um, nutrients. And these are my two favorite smoothie recipes, the green smoothie with kale. Kale is, kale is like um, um, the king of the greens because it has so many health benefits. And I like to you know, add it with some lemon and some pineapple and 
coconut water, since coconut water helps replenish your electrolytes. And of course, you can put mint in too for that nice fresh flavor. And then I like to make an anti-inflammatory smoothie with ginger, orange, coconut water, carrot juice, banana, pineapple if you want to make it sweeter, and turmeric. And you can just put in the um, powdered turmeric even right in, or you can use the turmeric root um, fresh. So in the carrot juice, what I do, because it's a lot of work to get out the juicer every day and make juice. So I make a big batch of carrot juice, and I freeze it in ice cube trays and put it in big Ziploc freezer bags. And then I pull out a couple ice cubes at a time, you know, of, of my carrot juice, pop it in the smoothie. And it's so good like that. Um, and very easy. And um, this one, this anti-inflammatory smoothie, very good like if you were to have arthritis or um, problems with inflammation, um, fibromyalgia, or even before you get your monthly cycle, very good for women to, you know, or even during your cycle to help with inflammation, especially if you're having issues with pain, very helpful. Okay, just a few things left here. This is um, Corona Salsa. So <laughs> um, it got its name from when the, the virus first came out, I, I was, you know, researching, you know, the best foods, the highest in vitamin C, and of course, bell peppers, they have more vitamin C than even citrus, and so we were trying to add a lot of these things to our diet to stay healthy and our immune system high. So we came up with this Corona Salsa, my husband loves it, we love it, and we're going to um, serve it to you guys so you guys can try it here in a bit, and uh, you can play with the recipe. I did not put jalapeno in the one you're going to try today because I know some people don't like spicy food, and I wanted everybody to be able to enjoy it. But yeah, you can add you know, even cayenne in it to taste. Um, so lots of great benefits there. High in vitamin C, boost your immune system. Eat it, you know, if you've got a viral, bacterial issue going on. Okay. Now, I've done so much um, study on, on vitamin D in the past um, really two years, starting when I got pregnant with my son and learning about the benefits of vitamin D when you're pregnant. And so... I really uh, just don't feel a health talk is complete without talking about it because it's so important. And also with, um, with COVID, they found out, um, they were looking into and there seemed to be a connection between people who had low vitamin D levels and who got very severely sick with COVID. And so one of the treatment protocols that some doctors who are helping give, you know, vitamin recommendations for COVID was to take high dose high doses of vitamin D. So it just has um, lots of good benefits. Helps support healthy bones, plays an important role in immune function, helps with your mood. So, um, you know, for depression, take vitamin D. A lot of people who are depressed, guess what? Vitamin D levels are very low. And um, this is very a good level. Blood level. So they will tell you it's somewhere around 30 is what they tell you is okay, but you can get it all the way up to 50, 75. It's even safe up at 100, okay? So the higher, the better. I mean, uh, over 100, don't, don't go that high. Um, but you're going to have a very hard time <laughs> getting it that high. Um, and you're going to need to supplement because we're not getting enough from the sun and um, particularly depending on the color of your skin, how much you get outside. Um, and here you're living farther north than where I live, so you're not getting enough of that, the sunlight. The UV rays need to be high enough. So what do people do when the UV rays are, are high and it's sunny and they go outside to the beach or to the zoo, whatever? They put sunscreen on, that's right. So are you going to get vitamin D? No, you're not going to get any vitamin D. So the best thing to do is to make sure you get enough sun. And then, of course, you don't want to burn. So then, you know, put on either light, long sleeves, or then put your sunscreen on. Um, and for very fair-skinned people, you need less. And for very dark-skinned people, you need much more. And, um, I mean, there's so many, so much studies on this. And um, in, in Minnesota... 
they were having a lot of people getting cancer. And they did a study, and sure enough, those people's vitamin D levels were just almost nothing. Um, you can take it in, um, I like to get it in the drops. The drops tend to be the cheapest, um, most concentrated amount. And um, that way, it, you know, it's easy to get a lot. And you can supplement 5,000 IUs, 10,000 IUs. You can even, for a short amount of time, supplement all the way up to 50,000 IUs. If you're sick with COVID, or you know, you're sick with something, or if you've been tested and you know your levels are very low, like 10, or even I know some people whose levels were below 10. That's horrible. Um, you can supplement very high you know, um, for, for a month, say, and then lower the dosage. Um, again, check with, check with your doctor. I'm not, a, I'm not a healthcare professional, so you know, do your own research. Um, this is not intended to be medical advice. Just saying that as, as a disclaimer, but I take high dosage and I haven't had any ill effects. It also needs to be vitamin D3. Yes, but thank you. Um, I have that here in my notes. Vitamin D3 with K2 and eat it with a fatty meal because um, it's a fat soluble vitamin and it needs that fat. Okay, um, so it's very important for pregnant mothers for the. Um, for your developing baby. Um, and they say that it may prevent certain conditions such as MS, certain cancer, stroke, and heart attack. And they say may because they um, haven't done enough studies yet because it's a vitamin. And a pharmaceutical company, they can't patent, you know, a vitamin, natural, you know, something found in nature. So unfortunately, like with a lot of foods and things like this, we don't end up with a lot of studies like proving something definitively because there just isn't money for the research. Whereas when there's a drug, you have an invested financial, um, what do you call it, <laughs> you know, incentive in doing the research that's going to pay for itself. So, you know, I look at it this way. These things that we've shown you today, as long as you use them wisely, use common sense, they're not going to hurt you. You know what I'm saying? They're only gonna have good benefits. They may not cure you of, of cancer. You still need to you know, go see your doctor and um, have the proper health care you need, um, but it's not gonna hurt you. Whereas many drugs, in order for a drug to be passed, 50% effective, right? That's the, you know, the standard they're aiming for, at least 50% effective so it can get approved. 50%, only 50%. To me, that's very low and it's gonna have side effects. And these things today are just natural, they're simple things. Okay, um, let's see here. Move on here. Okay, fresh air. Now if we think about it, we, we, don't, we forget that we're breathing, right, every moment. But without air, you can only live a few short minutes. So oxygen is very important, and every cell in our body needs oxygen. We need oxygen for thinking clearly. Oxygen helps our immune system, and you need oxygen to turn your food into energy. So we need fresh air. And um, like I said, we even forget that we're breathing. And most people, right, we go through the whole day, and we've never taken a nice, deep breath of good fresh air to get that air all the way down through our whole body to fill our lungs up. So it's important every day to breathe fresh air outside, outside breathe it deeply. It's also very calming for the nervous system. And then also think about where do we spend most of our time in, in the day? Outside or inside? Inside. So it's important to think about the air quality of where we're at in our homes, particularly in the rooms we're sleeping in, and even in our work. And so, you know, investing in an air purifier, making sure our filters in, in, our, in our homes and our vents are clean. These things are very important um, because it's important to breathe fresh air and not air that's, um, you know, full of, of toxins. And um, I, I always find it kind of, Ironic, people will use air fresheners, but really it just, the, the um, chemicals 
are just masking the smell. You're not really making the air fresh. So I don't use them because it's extra chemicals. I don't like chemicals, and I'm very sensitive to chemicals. Um, and also the aerosols the, in the cleaners and in the you know, hair products, they're very bad for you. And you're, you're breathing that, those chemicals right down into your lungs, and it's very harmful. So try and you know, ditch the, the aerosol things. Um, and of course, make sure that your house is free of mold and these things, because you can breathe those into your lungs and it can be very, very toxic. Um, I, how many of you know there's house plants that improve your air quality? Yes, good. So, and of course, there's different ones. Not all of them absorb the same toxins out of your house. And if you move into like a new house, nowadays the, um, the materials they build houses with have a lot of um, flame retardant in them. And, and these things are often um, chemicals that you're then breathing. So some of these plants, house plants, actually absorb those chemicals and those toxins so that you're not breathing them. So I love to have house plants. And then the other thing to think about is rebreathing your own hair because one of the, the ways that your body detoxifies itself and helps purify yourself is through breathing. When we take in a breath of fresh air, then our body breathes out the old air that has toxins from your own body. So if you're in a small room or you have something over your face, then you're rebreathing the same air over and over again, and that's gonna make you sick, right? And um, so just think about these things, ventilation, which of course we learned with COVID that ventilation is so important, right? Um, so I just, I think it's so important to talk about. Okay, um, we're gonna have just a short break before we do our last demonstration. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna hand out a survey for you guys to fill out, and that survey is your ticket for the drawing we're gonna do. And then I wanna make sure that you get some to sample the Corona salsa and some a drink back there. Yes? Uh, I just wanna make one comment on the, uh, the GMOs that you talked about in the beginning and the mm -hmm. genetically modified stuff. But there's a documentary that I think everybody should watch. It's called Genetic Roulette. And it was made in 2012. It's an hour and 25 minutes. It's called Genetic Roulette, The Gamble of Our Lives. And it's just chilling what it shows about, you know, the sprayed foods and the genetically modified organisms, what they're doing once they get inside of our system. And it's, you can just Google it up and watch it. It's just, you know, it's one of these you start watching and you can't stop, you know. It's really genetic roulette. Genetic roulette. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. I've, I've read some books on it at just really, yeah, it, it is a little scary. We are the scientific study right now on these genetically modified foods. Um, so I want to make sure who's handing out the surveys. Is someone yes. handing those out? Thank you. Good. Thank you. So um, as you go back there and uh, try some of the... Uh, the things that Hannah has demonstrated, the surveys are just sitting right there at the start of the table, and uh, it's just uh, some information if you're interested in any other health material or other, other resources that we have and you'd like to learn more about that stuff, uh, we can go ahead and get those to you. But also, we have a raffle, and I just wanted to show you what we have here. We have this book called Fighting Disease with Food, and uh, it has uh, really neat... Let me show you a little bit. Basically, uh, at the beginning of the book, there, are, there is an index dealing with specific diseases and what foods help specifically with that. And uh, this one here happens to be multiple sclerosis, and there's, there's a whole bunch. Um, it's by no means exhaustive, but it's a very, very handy resource. And a book like this normally goes for about 20 25 in the store, but you know, uh, we're going to go ahead and give out two for free. And if you'd be interested in being a part of that raffle, just uh, fill out that little survey in the back. And then near the end, we're just going to go ahead and put it in the basket and pick out two names. So uh, if you need a pen, there's pens there in the back. And while Hannah is transitioning here to, for her next demonstration, feel free to get back there and try some of the salsa, try some of the lemonade, and then we'll go ahead and continue. Thank you. Just one more thing. Yeah. Thank you. 
Hello, everyone. And just really quickly, I'm going to, I'll, I'll go over to this side of you, sorry. Uh, we're going to just briefly advertise two upcoming events we have next month. And the flyers for both of these is at the far left corner of this table here. Our first one is our International Vegetarian Food Fest. This is our 11th year having this festival. It's a wonderful opportunity to be able to share with the community all of the delicious ways that food can be made without any assistance from animal products or with meat or anything along those lines. Our members here at the church tend to lead a booth of the country of their origin, of their family, and so they can share some of their cuisine. We have Kenya, we have Chile, we have Romania, we have several other countries. So feel free to come on down um, and be a part of the wonderful experience. And that is June 5th. That's a Sunday afternoon starting at 3.30. Our next event, uh, our next seminar actually for our health ministry is Three Steps to Detoxifying the Body. And this is going to be done by Dr. Ray Bisevac. And he is going to be presenting on the various ways that you can help make sure that the, the machine that your body is and all the systems within it are kept in tip top, high quality shape. That is going to be um, June 11th, so a week after our food fest. June 11th, that's a Saturday in the afternoon at 2 p.m. in this location as well. So if you're here today, you know exactly where to come back. And if you have any questions, grab the flyers over there, or you can find one of us who is a part of the ministry here, and we'll be able to help you out. Thank you. Thank you. That sounds fun. I wish I was still gonna be in town. I love international cuisine. Yeah, me. Okay, I'm seeing a few people filling out surveys. That's great. And feel free to grab some of the samples in the back. How many books? How many books? hundred if we get a hundred. If we get a box, how many do we have? So I, have I, I think oh, I paid back. I, I get them for wholesale. So I'll have to just log in and see what the price is. Huh? I think so it's you want fine. hundred? Hundred. I'll let you know before I, maybe tomorrow night when I, it's not so crazy. Um, I'll tell you exactly how much it can be, and then, okay. okay. Good, good. Thank you. Also, good. other ones, if you wanted to go yeah, to you, you, you show me the now. others. I want to get, we need to get some new books. Yeah, we'll check the other ones. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. You want to come up with me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm using this basket here for... <laughs> you can move it. Thank you.
sign that said, please later when I let you know. Are we on? Great. All right. Just wanted to let you know. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the final demonstration with the hydrotherapy. You can continue to uh, get your samples, but we're going to go ahead and continue, and uh, you can continue to fill out the survey, whatever you need to do. So we're going to go ahead and continue now. And continue to eat as, as much as you'd like. Can I get my slides back up on the, up here, please? All right, so hydrotherapy and uh, water we're going to talk about here. Now, you know, we don't have time to talk about water and how it's so important for the body. The body's, you know, over 70% water and you need water um, to be healthy. And um, so we don't have time to talk about all that today. Um, and of course, water is very important to having a clean environment to live in. And, um, you know, we have running water, washing machines, flushing toilets. We don't often think about this, but um, people even, even in this country don't have running water, and um, it really is a privilege, and it really, um, I've lived without running water, and it's, it makes life quite hard. And um, due to um, plumbers and um, <laughs> how we have running water in, in our country today and sewer systems, um, we've really eradicated many diseases in this country, and, and it's really important. Um, good hygiene is essential for good health. Um, so we don't have time to talk about all that today, but we are going to talk about hydrotherapy, using water um, as a healing treatment. And so um, hydrotherapy has many benefits here, and I have a volunteer who's going to help me um, so I can show you guys what to do. Um, it decreases pain, decreases inflammation, it boosts immunity, it improves blood flow, helping bring um, white blood cells to the area where you need the healing. Excuse me. <coughs> um, it helps improve depression. So on, on depressed people, when they take these hot and cold showers, you know, as hot as you can stand for three minutes and then cold for a minute, that helps with depression. And uh, some programs that help um, treat depression in a lifestyle program actually use hydrotherapy. Um, it helps if you have joint, muscle, and nerve problems. It's good for stress and relaxing the muscles. Helps with constipation. Um, helps the body flush out toxins. And so, of course, there's lots of ways to do hydrotherapy, and I just want to briefly mention um, some here. You can do, um, of course, soaking in a hot bath, you know, with Epsom salt um, or a hot foot bath. And a hot foot bath is good to use for menstrual pain and headaches because it helps bring the blood down to your feet. So it's not all congested up here, or if you're having, you know, heavy cycles, you know, it's good to help, you know, stop that um, and bring it down to your to your feet. It'll also help with pain. So of course, hot and cold compresses, hot and cold showers, and then there's aquatic exercises, swimming. That's very beneficial, especially you know if you have joint problems, swimming. Hot tub, sauna. And saunas are really good for, for detoxing your body. It's a very good way to detox and to safely detox. And um, all right, so let's just, a couple things first is to check the temperature of the water. And if you're doing this on somebody who's a diabetic, make sure you actually test the temperature of the foot bath and make sure it's no higher than 105 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so what I have here is, um, set the lid down here. This is like a big pot like you'd make tamales in. Can everyone see inside here? So you have the, like the, the steam basket um, with your water in the bottom. And then you can put your towels on top. And, um, and even a bigger one than this is, is good. Um, and this is just the easiest way. You know, if you, if you have a pot that's big enough, so you can you know, stand them upright, compact, and fit a lot in here. Because um, you want to make sure you have hot towels to pull out as you're doing this. So then you're going to need a bowl with cold ice water in it and a rag. And you're going to set it up here on, you can do it on a bed or on a table. 
And, um, and this is one where you're going to do it for someone or have someone do it for you. So um, particularly you can use this if someone's, you know, fighting like a flu or a, we use this on a lot of people who are sick with COVID. And um, okay, so I'm going to have my volunteer um, get up here in just a minute. Um, first, you put one of the, um, one of, whoops, I'm grabbing two here. One of the hot towels, check it, make sure it's not too hot. Check with your elbow, because our hands are, are not as sensitive. Make sure it's not too hot, hold it there, because uh, you don't want to burn the person. My sister and I, this is kind of funny, we were really little, like, um, we, we were young. And my parents had done this on us, and we thought it would be cool to do it on each other to practice. And we burn each other. We got the water so hot. Because we were just little kids. I don't even know, I don't even know why we were home. Maybe we had an older sister, so she must have been supposed to be home watching us, but I don't know where she was, because we burn each other. I remember my mom's serious face when she looked at our backs. <laughs> Anyways, you can also use a, um, Orlando, what is it called? A, um, the dry, the dry one. <laughs> I'm so sorry. A heat pack, the heating packs, that's what they're called, a heating pack that, you know, and then you hold, and then the person actually knows how hot it is, and if it's getting too hot, you know, you can turn it down. Thermofor, Thermo yes, thank you, I'm so sorry. All right, so go ahead and get on. Thank you. And of course, they, you know, have them take their shirt off. Okay, so that is right on her back. And then I'm going to put her feet in a hot foot bath down here. And then next, I'm going to take another one out, put the lid on in between so they stay hot. And I'm going to put it over her chest. And then I'm going to put, this is just a dry one. Pretend these are wet. So this is the dry one over it to keep the heat in. And then I'll cover her up with a nice sheet. So again, we're keeping all the heat in, the heat from the hot foot bath, keeping this all in. Kind of like a Russian steam bath. Anybody ever heard of that? Yeah, okay, good. A nice warm blanket, and I'm gonna ask you, is it, is it too hot? No, okay, it's good. She's good. Okay. And whenever you do this treatment, after you do it, put the person to bed to go, go to sleep and rest because you want the treatment to then be able to work on the body and the body needs to rest because it's when we rest that our body is healing. Okay, so leave it for um, three to five minutes and then I'm going to take it off, put it back in to get hot again and I'm gonna, I'm gonna rub down with cold for 30 seconds. Cold, cold, cold that back in, and I'm going to put the fresh hot one on, on her. Uh, oh, I forgot about this. I'm going to have another cold cloth here. I'm sorry. Put this one on her head, so it's cool on her head. Cool on the head, hot on the feet. Okay, so then three to five minutes again, and then, of course, open it up. Wipe down with cold. Hold back in there with the ice, make sure it's staying cold, make sure these are staying hot. Put the hot on and do, leave the hot. Three times, do three times. So hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. Always end with cold. So now, say she's fighting an upper respiratory infection or like has the flu, we're, we're really getting the circulation going, and because of the hot, cold, hot, cold on her chest, we're bringing all those white blood cells right here onto her chest, and they're going to fight that infection. So you're working with the body for the body to heal itself, okay? Instead of working against the body or sending some very strong potion into whack, you know, um, you're working with the body very, very naturally, and the body's healing itself. Isn't that amazing? Thank you so much. Okay. 
Now, some people um, also in the, the foot bat with cold, but for me, I've always found that it's so easy for your feet to get chilled, even just from taking them out of the water and getting your socks on and getting the person to bed. So because you don't want to get chilled, it's very important not to get chilled, particularly when you're sick. I never end with cold on the feet, but you know your own self. If you, you know, think you want to end with cold and you won't get chilled, that's okay too. Thank you. And I'll take this off. Thank you for your help. Okay, if I go back to my slides, please. And we're good there. All right. This quote is um, by one of the founders of, of chiropractic care. It says, the power that made the body heals the body. Um, I went into my chiropractor. I, I love chiropractic care, and I got it a very frequently through my last pregnancy. And um, one day I was just laying on the, the rollers they have there, um, and I saw the picture up on the wall, and it had this quote on it. And I really love this quote. I, I really, um, it just makes perfect sense that the power that made our bodies heals our bodies. And the whole goal of all of these things, proper nutrition, rest, all these principles is to work with the body, not against the body, but to work with the body for healing. Because the body was made to heal itself. So it's very interesting that the, the eight principles, again, we didn't talk about all of them today, but the eight principles we talked about, they correspond with the ancient account of the creation of our world. And um, of course, God stepped in on day one um, as God, and he's the creator and the sustainer of life. And all of us need that, that power outside of ourselves, the bigger power in our lives. Um, day two, he made fresh air. Um, day three, the vegetation, our nutrition. Day four, he made the sun and the moon, which, again, our, we talked about the sun, the importance of the sunshine, and, and also the moon with the rhythms of life. Just like the moon affects the tide, it also affects our bodies and our rhythms um, for time and for seasons. And at day five, the um, creatures in the water, we need the water in our body to survive. Um, day six, he made the creatures and, and, and humans for exercise, for movement. We're made to be active, to move. Uh, day seven, you know, God created, um, he created rest, a time for us to rest, to come apart. And uh, we need that rest in our life, not just at night, but we need to take a time for rest, for family, for friends, and um, for seeking strength outside of ourself. Um, and, and then God also instructed Adam and Eve what they should do and what they shouldn't do, what they should avoid in order to live a happy, healthy, long life and to live forever. And um, I'll just read here. This is from Genesis. It says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and God saw everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. So... Um, Last quote here, the forms of disease are many and the healing of them is manifold. So God has given us many different things in nature through his creation that we can use for healing, to work with the body that he's created to find healing. I just find that really amazing, don't you? And I mean, the ultimate, you know, God wants us to, to live healthy, happy lives, to be in harmony with him, with others, and with the environment in which we live. Thank you. So at this time, we're going to do our drawing and um, have a few announcements. And if you have any questions, let us know. All right. Well, um, I just want to let you know that if you filled out a survey and you forgot to put it in here, go ahead and put it in before it's too late. So if, if everyone has already gone ahead and filled one out, we're going to go ahead and uh, have the drawing. And uh, uh, many of you have already asked questions uh, through and through. But if there's any of you that has any other questions, might give just a minute or two after this to answer those, and then we're just going to close out. So we're going to go ahead and uh, pick out two names, and uh, we'll see who the, who the winners are. So maybe you can close your eyes, Hannah, and stick your hand in Do there. Do we have a child in the audience who would like to...
come up and help? Yeah, sure, Abby would I like think to we come have up. two back here. Our little boy here and what's, what's my daughter the, in the back. Oh, you're, okay, so. I'll, I'll let each one of the kids draw one. Very good. Would you like to come and draw one? No, oh, he's scared. <laughs> okay. My daughter's not scared. <laughs> you want to come draw one? Okay, take one out and hand it to mommy, please. Oh, just right on top, Orlando. Good job. There you go. Just pull one out and, and hand it to me. Okay, all done. All done. We just have two to give out today. Sorry. All right. All right. So the first one is Anayel Reed. Yay! Oh, congratulations. Yay. Let's give her a hand. Okay. Can I get a volunteer to come hand these out here? And the next one is uh, Nancy Rodriguez. Congratulations. There we go. All right. Well, um, if you are interested in learning more, uh, we do have more health resources in the back as well. And uh, everything on that table is free except for the uh, hardcover books and the one next to it. Uh, those are uh, at a price. And if you're interested in them, uh, someone will be there to help you with that. Uh, does anyone have any questions that you didn't get to, to chime in earlier? Any specific questions? Do we have a mic that you want to use? I think there's one back right there here. that they'll bring to you. Uh, uh, Nancy. First of all, I want to say thank you. This has been an amazing, amazing blessing. Thank you so much for You're being welcome. here. Um, I, I asked already if it's available in Spanish, but we'll talk later. But also, the plants that you were mentioning, did you have a list of those or favorites or? Oh, house plants. House plants, uh-huh. Um, no, I keep aloe vera because aloe vera has other benefits, so I always keep that. Um, I have philodendrons and I have um, um, mother-in-law's tongue. Yeah, yeah, it's the same. The snake plant, mother-in-law's tongue, it's the same plant. Um, that's all I have because I live in a tiny house, and so I can only have what fits in my window. But there's a lot. There's a lot more. So just Google. It's, you can find. House plants. Thank you. Yeah. Any other question? One, one here. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. wait. Is this going to be online where you have a list of vegetables, those ones that you said were the most important? All the superfoods. Yeah. When this is recorded, this, was this recorded, not just live streamed? It is live streamed. Live streamed. Is it also recorded? Yes, it's going to be. Okay, so you can go back and reference and find yeah. the slides. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. There is a question here. For the milks, um, I knew that, that any animal product is not good for you. Mm -hmm. So are like not milks better mm -hmm. for a yeah. substitute? So just find the one that you like the taste of and that you're not um, you know, sensitive to. Some people have sensitivities to certain things. So um, I like, we like soy milk. Um, soy milk has a lot of protein. Um, almond milk tastes really good and high in calcium. Some people like oat milk. Uh, it just depends. And I also like to think about um, having a varied diet, too. So switch it up, you know? Yeah, there's lots of options. Just try. Try different ones. Okay, right. uh, do you have the recipe for the lemonade? It's excellent. Um, no, but I can tell you how I made it really okay. fast. That would be great. Um, I just take boiling water, add in the ginger, I don't measure it. I always do it to taste. Um, and then I add the monk fruit sweetener in that. So I'm kind of making like simple syrup slash tea. And then I add the lemons to that and just let it kind of seep and set for a while. And then I add ice to it. And I usually add like a little lemon juice as well to um, just, you know, so you get a strong lemon flavor and then a little stevia. And I use the powdered stevia 
And you have it at, um, where did we shop? Friday. No, not Costco, the health food store. Uh, Mariano's. No, no. Yeah, the, the no, no, no. Uh, the health food store we went to. Whole Foods. I'm sorry because it's, it's different. You have different oh, health food stores than we have. We have natural grocers and sprouts. And anyways, um, but Whole Foods had the stevia, powdered stevia. And I find that's the, that's the best stevia to use. I, I get unsweetened yogurt, um, plant-based yogurt, and I add the stevia in it to sweeten it. And fruit, it's so good. That way I'm not using sugar. The stevia is all right to use? It's not bad like the other sweeteners? No, no, it's not. I, you know, there's a lot of um, artificial sweeteners, yeah, that are not healthy to use. They're just chemicals. Um, but the, um, the stevia is very good. And the monk fruit, yeah, it's the same like stevia. It's natural. Just a second. Just a second. I have a question, but I wanted to mention to make it sweet, you can use even raw honey. I use that because I make similar like she does. Mm -hmm. You can use raw honey. Yeah. I don't eat honey, only I use it if I make a ginger tea with lemon. So you can use yeah. that as a sweetener. Mm -hmm. Even maple syrup too. Yeah, I use maple syrup a lot. My favorite sweetener now, because in the past year we've almost, we've almost quit using um, added sugars. And so my my favorite sweetness combination, and it works in baking, it works in everything, is to replace the sugar with half stevia and half maple syrup. But you have to go online and check the proportion. The stevia powder, like, you know, for a cup of sugar, it's like a very, very little, like in the teaspoon, amount of stevia powder that you use. Because if you use a lot of stevia, then you'll get a bitter aftertaste of stevia. Somebody asked about the monk uh, fruit uh, mm -hmm. uh, sugar. That is good or no? Yeah, it's just a it's a it's a fruit that has a like a nice sweetness to it, but it doesn't raise your blood sugar. And so they process it, so it is processed um, into like an actual sugar form. And at Costco, at Costco they sell it. And it's mixed with xylitol. So I don't use it like all the time for everything, but I use it in cakes and then my cakes are sugar free. So it, it's very nice, especially if you have blood sugar problems. Okay. And coconut sugar. Coconut sugar, good, use it in small amounts. Agave is very, it's, it's kind of controversial. Um, use it in small amounts. If you're gonna use it, treat it like sugar. It's still, it's still very concentrated, very refined high sugar. Yeah, yeah, it's still very processed. Whereas coconut or date sugar is a lot less processed. Yeah. Right. Exactly. The maple syrup, the honey, way less processed. Expensive shoes. I think the lady in the green shirt had some. No. no. Okay, over here was one and here. You mentioned um, to eat protein with each meal. Do you mm -hmm. have a recommendation how much protein we should, um, like vegetarian protein we should eat on a daily basis? That's such a good question. If you're pregnant, you should eat at least 70 grams of protein a day. I'm sorry, I don't know if you're not pregnant. <laughs> It's because I do, um, you know, um, nutritional work with pregnant people. So I know immediately for pregnant people. But I think the, the uh, CDC recommendation, yeah, is like around 60 for women. I think it's lower for men. Is it vice versa? No, it's more for men. 60 for men and 50-something for women. I can't remember. But, yeah, I mean... If, you know, it depends on your body, really. If you have a high uh, metabolism, if you're very active, you know, you need the protein. You need to be eating a lot of food. And see, a lot of diets today out there are very restrictive. Eat less food. If you're eating the right kinds of foods, 
You can eat a lot of food, and you need to eat that bulk amount of food to get the nutrition your body needs to have high energy. And I have trouble. I have trouble eating enough food so that I have enough energy, particularly if I'm pregnant or nursing. And I know other people also have that problem too. So get rid of the mindset about restricting and think about eating enough of the right foods. Yes, with this diet, if you're eating other foods, yeah, different story. You mentioned the one at Costco, the monk fruit. Is that mm -hmm. okay? Is it what? The monk fruit. Is, what wonder, about it? Is that okay to use the one they sell there? Because I know it's mixed. What yeah, it's mixed with xylitol, but, um, you know, if you're not using it, like, all the time for a lot of stuff. And um, the xylitol is it's not um, something that's super objectionable. It's just something that, that is still processed, so I wouldn't use all the time. It's an it's a alcohol sugar. Any other questions? Yes, before we close here, any, anything else? All right, well, I want to thank all of you for coming and those of you that are on the live stream. Um, before we go ahead and close with prayer, I just want to go ahead and uh, let you know that we have something else happening this evening. And uh, we're going to have a short promo video here shortly. Uh, it's a series on faith and understanding some of the big questions regarding the Christian worldview about the existence of God, about what God is like, about the Bible. And so if you are interested, if you're grappling with some of these questions, we would love for you to join us, whether come in person or on the live stream. In the last two years, we have seen an untold amount of suffering. Sickness, violence, riots, and natural disasters. Many needless deaths of young and old. People losing their jobs, many losing their homes, depression, anxiety, and suicide, all rampant in our world. As suffering has touched our lives, many are wondering if this is all there is to life. Is there an ultimate purpose or meaning? With the suffering and pain and chaos all around us, could there really be a God? We've been taught in school that God is a fairy tale that science disproves the Bible, that God cannot possibly be real. Are we just cosmic accidents who happen to be lucky or unlucky enough to live on this planet? If we are just a cosmic accident, then all this is just a part of life, and that's that. Is that the case? Does God exist? Can we trust the Bible? Is there real evidence for not just a God, but a God who loves me? who cares for me, and who has a purpose for my life. Can we truly have real faith today amidst the hard realities of life? Join us as we look at these important questions in Faith Today. close with prayer, and uh, Pastor Pirovsky has some last words here. Okay. I, well, I was over there with my little boy in the bathroom. Uh, probably you announce everything. Huh? For tonight. For tonight. For tonight and every night. Did you? Yes. Well, every, night. every night. Yes, it's yeah, it's going to be every night. 7 p.m. And also, I'm so glad that uh, Orlando and his wife, Hannah, are going to spend the whole week with us. And she's going to have each night also held nugget. On mental which, health specifically. Specifically on mental health, five to 10 minutes each night is going to be here at 7 p.m., not at this place, but in the sanctuary every night, beginning tonight all the way till next Saturday, and we will finish Saturday morning. I didn't know that she was in uh, uh, Finland. Her parents opened the restaurant there. Her mom. Her mom. My, uh, my daughter is going this summer to Finland. We need to find yeah, where is that restaurant. restaurant so maybe she can go and visit the restaurant over there. Jacobstad. <laughs> okay. Jacobstad. Jacobstad. Jacobstad, that's the place? Okay. All right. Thank you all for coming. You know about the future events also. You're welcome always here. Uh, this is the place. <coughs> and
and I'm sorry, and invite your friends also when you come here. Uh, you can stay here. Material, you know about the material. I'm not repeating and everything else. Can you please stand and we can close with a prayer also. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you wonderfully and beautifully created us. I'm so thankful also that you created our body also when sin came. You did not create it that we would suffer and die, but that is the consequences of evil and of sin. But you also put in us something that we can naturally heal. And I pray, Lord, that you put all those plants, all of this food that is natural and everything that we can use. Give us strength that we can get away of the old habits and create a new habits, healthy habits, because in healthy body is the healthy spirit. I'm also thankful for every person that is here. Protect every and each person that's been with us today. Let them go home safely and that give them strength with your Holy Spirit that they can make those good habits. And I pray also, Lord, that... Uh, uh, we can continue to give you glory in everything. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you again. All the best. And you can stay here. There is still uh, uh, quite some food. <laughs>